In this lesson, we'll continue our review of Math Test 7, Section 4, Calculator Permitted, Questions 12 through 15. Problem 12. A customer paid $53 for a jacket after a 6% sales tax was added. What was the price of the jacket before the sales tax was added? You want to be careful in this question because what we're doing here, it's a percentage question, but we're not given the, the starting value, we're given the ending. We're working backwards. So if you think about it, the starting value is x. That's what we have to solve for. Then it was increased 6%. That's the tax. And we end up at the final price, which is $53. There's a couple ways to do this. One way to, to check if you have the answers is you can work backwards. You could say, okay, one of these is starting. I'm going to multiply it by 1.06 because that's the original times the increase and get 53. And you could use your calculator. I'm inclined to select 50 here, right? Because it's an even number and we know that um, 50 is half of 100. So 6%. Uh, it would be 3%, it would be $3. So here's 50 times 1.06. You can confirm the answer like that, 53. But I want you to understand this concept because it could be a grid in question. So when you have just the ending price and you're given the change, the starting price is always 100%. It's before any change. But then we've got a 6% increase. This represents the 53, 1.06. It's 106%. So you could make an equation, you could do 1.06x equals 53 and solve it. But if you always, if you can just figure out that this is 1.06, just remember you always divide, you would just take 53 and you'd use your calculator to divide by 1.06, that will give you the starting price working backwards. And so we'll see this on other questions as well. Just keep that in mind for percentage questions, but either way we arrive at the, all right, let's take a look at 13 is a graph question. We've got Teresa's speed and time on the y-axis or speed and the time. It's really sort of up and down the um, speed and time in minutes. So it's it's um, sort of a random slope. It um, goes up, it's static, gradually down, sharply up, sharply down. She ran on the treadmill for 30 minutes and her time and speed are shown above, which according to the graph, which of the following statements is not true. So it's not true. Teresa ran at a constant speed for five minutes. A constant speed is a flat amount. And so here, not true. Well, here she ran at a constant speed from five to 10. That is true, right? She ran at a, at a, at a static speed for five minutes. So it is true. We want to find one that's not true. Teresa's speed was increasing for a longer period of time than it was decreasing. So increasing. This is all increasing, and that looks to be a total of five minutes. She's flat here, and increasing from 20 to 25, that is another five. So it's a total increasing of 10 minutes, but from here, that's 10 minutes down, and then here, that's five minutes. So she was increasing at 10, but decreasing at 15. And here it's saying her speed was increasing for a longer period of time. That is wrong. We know it was decreasing. This is the correct choice. Again, I'd probably just select that because it's pretty confident. You look at their choices, but uh, remember time is a factor on the test. All right, let's take a look at number 14. In the figure above, what's the value of x? Now this is a four-sided figure, a good formula that you should know for any multi-sided shape to figure out the degrees. It's n minus 2 times 180, where n is the number of sides. And so a four-sided shape, four sides minus 2, we know it's going to be 2 times 180. That's going to tell us there are 360. So you can do this with any multi-sided shape, a six-sided shape, an eight-sided shape. It's n minus 2 times 180. So 360, and we can subtract the 45. So we're left with 315. And if you notice, all of these are x, so they're all equal. So I would just use your calculator for this one. And we're going to divide by 3 because those are three equal x's. And the answer is 105 for that one. But it's a good formula to know. comes up with other geometry type questions. D. And we'll take a look at one last question on this page. It's number 15. If 51 cent coins were stacked on top of each other in a column, the column would be approximately 3 and 7, 8 inches tall. At this rate, which of the following is the closest number to the number of one set coins it would take to make eight inch column, eight inch tall column. So this is just a ratio question. We've got three and seven eighths, three and seven eighths. And 
helpful if you know how to convert certain fractions to decimals. 1 eighth is 0.125, 7 eighths is 0.875. And again, you could just use your calculator, but it's helpful if you know these. So 3.875, and we're told that is equal to 50 coins. This is the height, this is the coins. And now we want to see at this rate, the closest number of one cent coins to make an eight. Now, if you kind of look at this, this is how you'd set this up, you just have to be consistent, right? On the top is the height, the bottom is the coins. You could flip it as long as you're consistent across. I would just look at this and say, well, this number is pretty close to four and it's 50. And this number is eight, which is double four. You could see this is going to be a hundred, right? It's just the closest. I mean, obviously this is going to be the answer I and mean, you could use your calculator and you could do 400, that's five times eight, divided by 3.875. It's gonna be a little bit more than 400. We're just trying to find the, or 100, a little bit the closest one to it. And the answer here is B.